so I'm gonna try not to say good morning. <laughs> uh, the the gentleman that I've been talking about for the last few videos that I have been watching his YouTube's the Billion Dollar Man. I'm just gonna call him the Billion Dollar Man from now on. Anyway, he I was listening to one of his his YouTube's and he was talking about just saying good morning and and just I guess he was expressing how irritating it is like that we always say this because in essence, we don't really care. We really don't care um, about anyone's morning per se. <laughs> it's like, well, like you go places and you know the, oh, how are you? It's like, do you really care? I mean, generally speaking, we don't really care. <laughs> And it's sort of, it's sort of forced emotion, isn't it? To someday, good morning. Like, well, what if it hasn't been a, like in your perception, a good morning? <laughs> but anyway, I just thought it was an interesting concept that maybe I should just get right into it. <laughs> so I wanted to share a little bit about, and I, I, I haven't been going back to this because I'm, I am living in the now and learning how to create my reality, learning how to create my, my future. I'm in the, I'm in the practice of creation mode. And so I haven't been reverting very much to the past, but yesterday I was, I was coaching one of my friends. He actually calls me his life coach, which cracks me up. I was coaching him and he, um, he had had like a bump in his road. He had had quite a bump in his road and we were discussing it. And, you know, at one point he said, well, do you know what it feels like to, you know, whatever it is? And I, yeah, I do. I know exactly. <laughs> so I, I was doing my math the other day. It was between... 2014 and 2015 um, that I had I had gone off of an antidepressant that I had been on for I don't know probably about at least six years and I had tried to get off of it before and I was not able to every time that I tried to get off of it I wasn't able to and this time I had weaned myself off. I weaned myself off for nine months. I was only taking 10 milligrams or whatever of Paxil. Paxil was um, the, the, the medication that I was on. And I weaned myself off for nine months and I really, really fell off a cliff. I, I, I fell off an absolute cliff. I was... Um, and it was extremely difficult at this time. It was extremely difficult uh, for me to function. And I felt really, really fortunate that somehow I was able to keep my job. But there were there were times where I was driving over this mountain and I hadn't slept all night. I, I got insomnia uh, for the first time in my life, like real insomnia, <laughs> where there were days and days I might get three hours, I might get five hours, might not get any. I mean, I was, I was really un, like not safe to drive. And I was actually not wanting to share that with people. I wasn't wanting to share um, what was going on with me. I also was really, really, really sick. I was really like physically sick. I, um, I, I wasn't, I, and I was seeing all these doctors for all these different, um, and nobody was really able to help me. And it, the general synopsis of it all was, you need to go back on your antidepressant <laughs> and you will be on that for the rest of your life. And I, and I had just really, I had it in my head that I was never going to go back on it. Um, and so I was uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable for a very long period of time. And yesterday I had gotten the invitation, my yearly invitation to attend the Hay House, um, a summit. They, they have it, it's online every year. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing and it's free. And 
I remember that year that I wasn't doing very well, I had done the summit like religiously. <laughs> and there were some, there were some, like, it seemed really weird, the people that had the most impact on me. Um, and one of them was a, a lady that talked about um, kefir and kombucha. Um, I had been, been diagnosed in the past, diagnosed with um, autoimmune thyroid disease. And so I, I was like, okay. And I had seen an endocrinologist and the endocrinologist said, there's nothing we can do for you. And also your diet isn't helping. But I, I knew unequivocally that my diet was helping because I had just had my labs taken and they had gone down a hundred. They went from like 500 to 400. So I knew that my diet was helping. And I had eliminated, um, it seems like nearly everything, like gluten, sugar, dairy, and I'm also a vegetarian. <laughs> so that made it like a little tricky. And, um, and soy, I mean, anything that had inflammatory properties in it, I had to, to not eat. And so I, I came to this healthy, like really nice diet and I try to stay on it. And I knew that that was helping, but the kefir and the, and I couldn't do kefir because it's dairy. So I ended up doing kombucha and kombucha just, I mean, I started to feel better after I started like taking a little bit of kombucha every day. And I used to do these shots of it that you could get, um, that had, um, it had stevia cause I couldn't do sugar. So, and I couldn't do dairy. So it had to be, um, coconut milk. Everything had to be coconut milk based or some other type of, of, you know, milk substitute, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, and basically what I'm trying to, to say is, is that what I notice with myself and my friends that I, that I coach is that we expect results like right away. We expect to feel better right away. Like, like you go, you go to the gym, you know, for a week and it's like, I don't understand why I haven't lost 10 pounds <laughs> and I'm exaggerating, but I'm kind of not. And I felt the same way. It, it took a long time for me to climb out of the hole that I was in. It took, it took months. And then it seemed like every year after that, I felt better and better and better. And then, you know, and then I had this, this very traumatic event happen you know, about a year ago that, that really bumped me off a cliff again, but I had the skill, I had this foundational skills and to be able to pull myself out of it a lot easier. But it really takes like the discipline in in it all is the really wanting it. Like really, really wanting to get better. W wanting to get better. And the other thing that was really instrumental for me was the writing of positive aspects, just the writing of positive aspects, things that I loved about life. And I had never in my life wanted to live more than when I mean, even in the state I was in, I was like, I just believed that I would feel better. And I remember that I used to check in. I used to check in with myself a lot. I would check in and I would say, is there anything that can make this moment better? What can I do in this moment to make this better? And what I found was, and it kind of makes me cry when I say it or even think it was, what I found was, was that nearly every moment there was nothing that could make it better. That life was just so amazing. It was so amazing. That life itself is just so amazing. Everything that we get to experience. Just sitting and watching the beauty of the planet and the people and everything we get to experience here, it is just 
a wondrous, wondrous life. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. I'll be back.